This video is about the speed selector circuit in a Biogram 4000 series turntable. I will discuss the circuit and I will show how to convert the indicator light bulbs to LEDs. For more information please visit my blog at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. This shows the relevant part of the speed selector circuit. At the heart of the circuit we have relay 1. Relay 1 switches the DC motor between 33 and 45 RPM. In its natural unpowered position, Relay 1 is in the 33 RPM position. So when the turntable is turned on by pressing start, the motor runs at 33 RPM and the 33 RPM indicator light is on via the switch within the relay. Now there are two ways to switch the turntable from 33 RPM to 45 RPM. One way is to press the 45 keypad. That pulls the lower end of the relay to ground and thereby switches the motor immediately to 45 RPM. At the same time, this switch flips over and the 45 RPM indicator light bulb comes on. This state latches via the connection that is dotted red to the base of IC2. As soon as the 45 RPM light bulb is turned on, this line is pulled high and that turns on IC2. Once IC2 is on, the relay is permanently powered even if the keypad is released. This creates a permanent condition where the turntable remains in 45 RPM. Pressing the 33 keypad, this state can be interrupted by pulling down the base on IC2 to ground which interrupts the current to the relay and so it releases and goes back to its unpowered ground state. At that point the turntable runs again at 33 RPM. Another way to turn the turntable to 45 RPM is via the auto switch feature. The auto switch feature is controlled by the position slide and it can also pull up the base of IC2. This shows the relevant part of the circuit for the auto speed switch. The auto speed switch is triggered whenever the turntable does not detect a 30 cm record and then proceeds on to find a 17 cm record. The speed switchover is caused by this lengthy band on the position slide. When this band passes in front of the light sensor, this is IC1 down here, then uh, transistor 17 turns off, which causes a high potential at its collector. And so this high potential then is able to charge this capacitor C21 sufficiently high because the slide is uh, slow and the band is long. And so when the voltage is high enough, then uh, IC2 is triggered and the player is switched over to 45 RPM. Whenever a smaller band passes through the uh, detector, then capacitor C21 of course also charges, but the time is not long enough and so the potential does not get high enough to affect the switchover. The auto speed switch needs to be prepared for the case when a 30 cm record is playing at 33 RPM. During the playing of a 30 cm record, the 45 RPM switchover band of course also passes through the sensor at some point, which would charge up capacitor C21. However, transistor TR8 its base is connected to the detector arm circuit and whenever the detector arm circuit detects a record, transistor TR8 is turned on which pulls down the line that goes to IC2 and this prevents the charging of C21 and so the auto speed switch is disabled while a 33 RPM record is playing. I decided to convert the speed indicator light bulbs over to LEDs. This here shows the indicator panel from the bottom and so these two compartments, these shield the uh, light bulbs. It is very easy to remove these compartment covers. One can simply push them out back out of these grooves here, these two grooves, and then the light bulbs are revealed. 
Now the light bulbs are held in place with these metal clamps. So here I already removed uh, the metal clamp. My first attempt to replace the light bulbs was with amber LEDs because they usually give a pretty warm glow that in a small scale like this here can go for an incandescent light bulb if one doesn't look too closely. And so here you see the result. Now what I did not like is that the scale indicator is hardly visible as red. In fact, what you see here a little bit red, that is a reflection from the uh, light in the room and it does not come from the amber backlight. The reason for this is that amber LEDs, you see it here on the spectrum, is emitting a very narrow uh, wavelength range and this wavelength range is not overlapping with red. And the issue here is that we need red light that we can reflect from the red indicators. Now the dashed line here, that is the spectrum of an incandescent light bulb. And so you see it has a very wide spectrum that covers a vast range of the wavelength spectrum. Now here we see the uh, how it looks with an incandescent light bulb. This is from my biogram 4004. And uh, here you see that we have a beautiful red reflection on the uh, indicator. The reason for that is, of course, that the incandescent light bulb emits a strong component that is red and so it can be reflected. Now the solution to this conundrum is to use a red-green LED, which can be tuned to look pretty much like an incandescent light bulb. Because you see here the incandescent light bulb has very little blue light in there that gives them this nice uh, orange glow but we have a lot of green and red and so if we use the right resistors for the two LEDs that are in that one LED bulb then we can uh, get a very uh, realistic looking incandescent glow. So let's see how this looks like. Here you see my implementation of the red-green LEDs. In fact, what I used here are uh, red-blue-green LEDs, but I cut off the uh, leads to the blue LED because we really don't uh, need the blue one to get an incandescent light glow from these LEDs. These here are my two resistors. One is a 3.3 kilo ohm and the other one is a 1000 ohm. So the um, green LED runs on the 3.3 uh, kilo ohm and the uh, red one on the 1000 ohm. Um, this here varies depending on the LED models because the uh, three colors or two colors that are in these combination bulbs, they uh, can widely vary in their intensity per uh, voltage that is applied. So one needs to play a little bit with each of the um, uh, products that one could consider uh, using here. What I found out by trial and error is that one should use a LED that is fairly bright. So I would recommend something that has maybe 60 millicandela or more per uh, LED in here. It's interesting to note here that I had to push the LEDs over as far as I could to uh, achieve a, a, a homogeneous illumination of the uh, scale because LEDs emit uh, from the uh, front end and they are much more directed than incandescent light bulbs but in combination with uh, roughing up the LED bulb with uh, my Dremel tool uh, this yielded a fairly even illumination. Uh, to make this perfect uh, I put a little strip of uh, tape on the inside here to shield this side of the scale a little bit from the light that comes out of the front of the LED and that gave pretty much an exact copy of the uh, uh, illumination that um, is achieved with incandescent light bulbs. Here you see the tape that I uh, put in here to shield the light. Uh, if I did this again, I think I would probably uh, simply use a black uh, felt marker and blacken the uh, front of the LED and that should probably give a very nice effect. Here you see the LED lit up and um, I think this is a very authentic incandescent glow that is coming out of this compartment. And here you see the result from the top. And so you see a very nicely red illuminated scale indicator and an incandescent glow from the back of the scale. Wonderful. This concludes my video about the speed selector circuit in a Biogram 4000 series turntable. Thanks for watching.